Hey, and welcome back to Geek Show Arcade. How y'all doing? Beep, boop. Oh, so yeah. good. Yep, this is where we play the games, all the games. We yes. talk about the games too. Tin Can Tony it. is here this time, so th that's great. Oh, oh that's I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. It's just I'm in the middle of nowhere, and I couldn't get anything to work right, so now I'm just using straight Apple products, and this is what you get. Hey, hey this hey, isn't bad hey. though. Like, like I'm works. impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. Like, in it, you got you're in your car studio there, so it's it's just like TikTok. So I'm feeling really comfortable. <laughs> I'm the, feeling uh, super yes, comfortable right, right now. <laughs> this is I'm doing a TikTok episode yeah, here. It's a tin, um, TikTok Tony. Can oh, I can I scroll in? It is no, using SpaceX yeah. though. Yeah. Swipe. So oh, this is Lee's and some Starlink. Who do you Starlink who'd connection who'd at you, the Kai, hotel place oh, I'm at? Oh, they have it out there. Oh, yeah. I used it a couple weeks ago. Got 150 down with like 50 milliseconds latency. It was good. That's yeah, actually not bad for good. satellite internet. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What are you getting there? Not that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Maybe they I don't think have it's it configured because correctly it's, or something. Well, it's one, it's one Starlink connection for, you know, there's five families at this different, uh, yeah, at five okay. different units that are using it. So, so you got to knock them off for it to be better. Plus, yeah, if you only know, I you had access the, to, to it, you know. I could, I you could never know when the satellite's going to move away from you. Well, let's introduce yeah. the panelists here. Uh, he's been talking quite a bit already. We've got Quati. Hey, hey, hey. Coming at you live from Barrel. Well, no, not even Barrel. I'm I'm 30 minutes outside of Barrel. Mm. <laughs> go Little knows where the crap Tony is. Yep, go rock dogging. Find some red Barrel for me. I need hey, to be careful out there, find. Tony. Help is a long ways away, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Take a All right. Next You're up supposed is to Owen. give me a sword when you say that to me. Uh, I was going to flip you off, but... It's dangerous That's to kind go of... alone. Take this. Yeah, that's what I was going to do, but I want to keep it family friendly. Uh, who'd you introduce? Me? Yeah, you. Okay, well, follow me here. This is where you're going to get Big Brain Owen, apparently. I've, apparently these clothes, my yeah, business, I, I my enterprise. I think that moment has passed. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> winding down. Ago, for, dude. It's winding down for sure. Yeah. 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 And we got Lando. Hey, it's Lando. I am not Jaren. Uh, you can catch me here or on threads at Landon.Conover. So I just retweet a bunch of stuff, and it makes me happy. That's all. Um, we have a host. His name is Jaren, the Jaren. one everyone hates. Hey. Uh, hey. It says it right there, dude. I'm just reading off the screen. Okay, fine. I'm you Jaren. typed it in. You can find you me on Twitter it in. at Jaren or on Geek Show Help Desk. Uh, anyway, we got a we got a good show for you today. Uh, first off, we're going to start off with some emails. Email. Oh, that was great, Tony. That was great. <laughs> Uh, uncanny, first... uncanny <laughs> resemblance, I'm telling you. Uh, first email is from Twyman. He says, Onyx on Halo proof. He did it? Oh! He did it. He did it. Did he send a screenshot? He did. Not sure why it's a big deal to Owen, but yes, I do have Onyx on Halo. Here is the proof. <laughs> that, that That's so good. <laughs> That, Great that, show that time you as always, up, my good friends. Also, give my best to recurring guest on the show, Lambo, if he showed up this time, Twyman. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I have, I have feelings. I'm feeling some kind of way right now. How many hours have you put into Halo to get to Onyx? So because... the, pic the picture he, he sent in was a, it looks like it's sealed, <laughs> copy of Halo Master Chief Collection for Xbox One with a Pokemon Onyx card on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Twyman? Twyman, I didn't look at the picture, but that was well played because I was well I totally played. I totally bit that hook. I've been trolled officially. <laughs> uh, I have. I'm going to talk about that because Jaron is uh, Jaron has a thing on here for what games are playing, and I've got one I've been playing. Let me tell you. Let me give you a little teaser. Starts with a H. Anyway, Hogwarts Legacy. That's the one. That's Definitely tough. Hogwarts. Excellent. Yeah. Got an email from Craig. He says, greetings, arcade gang. After listening to your most recent episode, Game Pass is going up. Wondering what your thoughts are on the future of game prices. Hold steady, increase, or decrease? Um, there's more to the email, but let's, let's get into the uh, discussion right now. Um, well, go ahead, Tony. we saw them try to raise the prices this gen to 70 for the trip triple a and the quadruple a games right so you know i, I don't am... think they're gonna try and raise again for a long time and they haven't even really stuck to that 70 for a lot yeah. of games i'm well they I'm have okay to push the envelope this. right because games were more expensive than 60 dollars in the 80s 
Yeah, at eighties money. You know, at eighties money, and, and and that's the thing though. Like, but I feel like that's a correction that had to take place. Like, it's just people don't have that disposable of an income to spend that unless you're a dedicated gamer. Like I'm not going to spend $80 on a game for my kids. Yeah, $70 gonna... for a game that typically lasts 30 hours, you know, of that's play time. That's, that's a good deal. But like when you go to not... the movies, it's $20 but for I know, a ticket but it's... nowadays. I know, but this is the same thing as like Netflix raising their prices. Well, like, I don't know. Maybe yeah. not. No, you make a good point, but also you got to get away from this time equals, equals value. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With games. no, you're right. Yeah, you're you're definitely right. There's a there's a um, ceiling, right? There's a extent. ceiling. Yeah, you can use it to an extent, but I I'd pay I'd pay sixty dollars for a fantastic eight hour game over yeah. sixty dollars for a mediocre thirty hour game. Triple A though insinuates a level of quality, whether it be length of time That's true. or just That's quality true. of the Determ- game or who graphics determines or something that? Like who that. determines triple A? Like is there a metric? Or is it's that just like how hey, much money was tri- poured into the okay. making of the so, game? Yeah. Okay. So that yeah. doesn't yeah. to me you can't you can use triple A as a value, maybe, but not as a quality. Like it's not but, like a triple A game can still be crap. Uh, that no, that's a lot absolutely of true. Here. Here's the other thing you got to consider too, though, is we have a lot of indie developers now making really good games for twenty or thirty bucks. Yeah, yeah. And, the market yeah. is not what it used to be. Like back exactly. in the '80s, '90s, even 2000s, right. there wasn't any indie games really, and all games were sixty dollars. We now have this breadth of of choice out there, yep. and there are so many good indie games nowadays. Yeah, for for the, bar- the barrier of ent- for entry. Yeah, you know, as as we pro- progress socially into technology, technologies become less magical and more math- mathematical. And so and, now, now there's a metric that people can use to make a good indie game if they've got a great idea. And if you don't like the price, just wait a couple weeks. You'll get it for cheaper. Yeah, that's yep. true. Unless you you're gotta, Nintendo or From Software. Also, you got to consider now with all that large choice, all the large choices we have, or not large, but the breadth of choice we have. With indie games, the AAA titles have to compete with that too now. You know? I can't. So I can't so tell. Now you got you got some people out there that are like, well, should I buy three games for twenty dollars that are really good, or one game for sixty dollars? You know. So yeah, it's like there's I, there's just it's, we're spoiled for choice. I yeah, find it hard though you know. because capitalism and AAA games in general, the thought is I want to make an indie game that blows up. And then gets as much money as a triple A game, be thought about like a triple A game, but have the the overhead and the cost be something of an indie game. And so I, f- I find capitalism working against the indie game culture because they just want to get rich. Yeah, I think, instead of I think the a good sad game. truth is a lot of indie developers don't make it very well. There's a few that blow up and they, they do yeah. extremely well, but Stardew Valley. I I think the most of most of them are probably still struggling to get by. Yeah, I think the majority of the majority of indie game developers that's their hobby, that's their second job. Yeah, that's their side hustle. They have a real job doing. And I feel like they just lack marketing, right? Like that's a big part of it. A month, a lot of the reason why a game goes anywhere is because it gets released by E3 when they were still around and. It gets promoted by whatever console or whatever thing. Yeah, but you know? there's a lot of de- a lot of different ways to go viral now these days. That's the true. It's good and cheap, so that's true. Yeah, there's and, just it's, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, and and he brings up Game Pass specifically, and that that's really up for debate. Like I'm starting to be on the side of I, I don't really like Game Pass. Um, and I probably won't renew it, but I have another two years, so I have a long time to change my mind. <laughs> oh, see, and I'm still a big fan of Game Pass. I just, yeah. I just bought two more years. I can see why they're raising the prices, though, as they've been consuming uh, more studios, like they said they would. Like, yeah, it makes sense because there are a lot more. Acti- there's Activision games there now. There's going to be Call of Duty, so it makes yeah. sense there's, that they're and there's raising also the their per- price. And you and don't have to subscribe value. if you don't like it. And there's also perceived value, not just the actual value they're bringing, but they're right. saying, "Hey, we're bigger now." Hey, like there's a lot you can do when you've when you've digested all those game studios, even though you're gutting a lot of them. You know that you to can me, you can charge more. To me, I just yeah. rather wait for sales and do humble yeah. humble bundles because then I get to keep the games forever. 
Well, yeah. that goes back to what we were saying. There's so many different ways to buy games now and different kinds right. of games to buy, you know? Um, anyway, going back to his email, I was thinking back to the first game my older brother and I bought for the new NES in 1987, Castlevania. Still my favorite game to this day, probably what because of game. the memories rather than the actual gameplay. No. Lol. We went to yeah. Fred Meyer in Bountiful, Utah. Maybe it was called Grand Central. And purchased Castlevania for something like 30 to $35 in 1987. I guesstimate that is around $80 in today's money. Must have been not new. Um, in the early 90s, I purchased the Spider-Man and X-Men SNES game at the Toys R Us in Sugar House, Utah, and it cost me $80. $170 in today's money. This was the worst single game I've ever bought, and I still regret saving up for a month <laughs> to purchase it. <laughs> yep. Another topic y'all could discuss sometimes is the worst games you've ever spent money on and how much they cost. Game on, Craig. Let's do it right now. It's a, it's a light news week. The worst, worst games game I ever bought. Uh, Elden Ring. No. Oh, come <laughs> on. You love it and you <laughs> I'm, know I'm it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. For me, I'm going to have to say probably Jedi Survivor because it is such a technical disaster. I cannot play it without getting nauseous because of all the hitches. And that was a $70 still. game. It's yep. a piece of crap technically, which is sad yep. because I really want to play it because gameplay-wise and story-wise, it looks amazing. Yeah. Just play it on Xbox on Game Pass now. Yeah, I, I don't want to start over. I'm like 10 hours into it. Oh, yeah, I don't. I didn't. I haven't bought any games. Uh, you know, I got into gaming once streaming had started, like Game Pass started. Like I was playing before, but like most of them were gifts or it was just Halo. I only played Halo, <laughs> but that was my gaming life until. Yeah, I can't think of any bad Pass. games I've bought. Mm-mm. That's the thing is, I didn't get into gaming until the N sixty four, and by then there were so many different review magazines and ways yeah, to see how just, games you, were before yeah. buying them that I have always, always just researched what games I want to get. And so I usually had a good idea of if I was going to like it or not before I bought it. I guess the closest thing would be I bought Hexen for the N64 back when I had an N64, like back when I was 13 or 14. And at the time I didn't like the game, but now I look back on it. Hexen is good. Yeah. Hexen's actually pretty rad. Oh, I, I do <laughs> so, have one. I do have one. Turok. You get out of here with that. <laughs> I'm, I have only fantastic. one. I have. It is. Oh, it is. I only had one <laughs> issue. I hated it. It made me so motion sick. The way. Oh yeah. Back on the was it was that on the N sixty four was that on the game four. Cube? Yeah. Yeah, on the N sixty four, that made me violently ill, and I have no reason for why it did that. It just the way the probably the low frame rate. You yeah. mean you didn't and, like playing at 20 frames per second? Sometimes no, in that was and how, 12? And probably how, why. Right and how there. close <laughs> did you sit to the TV? I mean, 90s close. Yeah, it's probably why too. Oh, there it is. This. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're talking <laughs> three, three, four feet, you know, close. So, yeah, it made me ill. And I remember being like, what a waste. I'll never play this again. I never beat that game. Oh, dude, you should pick up the uh, Night Dive studios remake uh, yeah remaster yeah. of it that's when it's, you talked about that a while ago i was like you know what maybe it's time to revisit that because they it's it's a perfect game for it. your ally x that's coming Ooh, yeah that's yeah. right actually i might have an extra i might have an extra code for it i'll check and Ooh, let you know okay yeah i okay. just got another one another star wars game actually it was star wars <laughs> episode one um, oh that is a good one i had that on pc and that was a huge turd <laughs> yeah because but prior to that Lucasfilm or LucasArts could not miss. Every one yeah. of their games was gold. And so episode one was, was coming out. I got super excited for this game. Got it. And like, Was it a this? racing game because what of the pod races? No, no, no. This oh, was, that um, was... pot. That was episode one pod racer. If I remember, oh, right, it was like an isometric view. Oh. And it was janky AF. And it, yeah. it just wasn't good. It was just supposed to run through the story of the movie. Yeah. And you play as the characters. And it was it was trash. Yeah. So there's my I answer. I picked that one too. Yep. Uh, okay. So we we got a slower week for you, but there is one giant uh, golden nugget of of news here, and Owen's got that. Let's start out with it. Is this the uh, 
AMD. Yes, so, Owen. Okay, it's okay. the Ryzen nine. The Ryzen nine. <laughs> Sorry, I, I have two, and I don't know which one you're talking about because is this a CPU. What? It yeah. is. This, this AMD, should have been in the in the tech so, show, by the way. It's no, a CPU, see, that's a, the thing. I know, I know, but the gaming news was so light, and I didn't want to trigger Tony being so far away if he had a heart attack, like getting into a hospital. I, anyway, so Thanks we put it in the gaming. Yeah, that's what I did. We're here for you, Tony. I didn't. I did not just make that up. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so Ryzen the what is it? Zen five. This is the Ryzen nine series, right? Um, and the 9950, 9900 series, uh, it's out. They they announced a uh, they announced a launch date, um, which is July first, uh, July thirty first. My bad, July thirty first. Um, spec spec wise, I didn't get into a lot of that. I'm still rocking a fifteen hundred X, so I'm ready. I and sold you a thirty nine hundred X. 3900X. Sorry, that was 1500X was the one before. I'm still rocking <laughs> yeah. a 3900X. Come on. So, um, so yeah. So, I am due well, for an got, upgrade. We've gone over I'm pretty the excited. Specs. Yeah. You guys yeah, excited? That's... You get so so. Here's my question. I'm are excited you gonna for wait it because it means it means the new ones are coming after X... that with the X3D stuff. Yeah. Okay. If is you're that buying you're a processor for? for gaming, I would totally recommend wait for the X3D. Why does the yep. X3D do better with gaming? Is it because of the 3D gates, like in the, the, extra, in the no the extra cash? Oh, they, okay. cash they stack yeah. they stack level two memory on top of each other, basically on the chip die, so you get double the memory plus faster or more throughput, and yeah. it just it, games love that. Well, so. that wasn't the only news. So we've gone over the specs. They're actually what, like a? They're not a huge boost over the seventy-seven, the seven thousand series, are they? Uh, it's a 16 percent yeah. IPC increase, which is pretty, pretty sizable That's, gen on oh, gen. Okay. okay. And then there uh, is a very minor frequency boost. I think okay. we're talking like one or two hundred megahertz. Not right. Much. But if you're if from for you, Owen, that's going to be a oh, massive yeah. upgrade. It's a huge. Yeah. I mean, I've got. From, a, I'll, I'll have to move. I'll, I will have to change my architecture, right? Because this is the AM5 socket now. Yep. New Mobo, the AM4, new RAM. So I'll have to upgrade yeah, a few things. Me too. A I'm, one, on a, I'm on a 5900X, and that's the AM4. So And even a 3900X, you're going to see massive improvement. Even a 5900X, I'm going to yeah. see a big boost too. Is that what you're that's on too, Jared, is the well, 5900X? Yep, 5900X. You guys didn't do the X3D? I was, it wasn't out then. It wasn't even yeah, announced. Yeah, it wasn't out. Yeah. Um, it, I was mightily tempted by the seventy eight hundred X three D, but mm. I'm 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 glad I waited. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. That wasn't the only news about that though. Uh, a European gaming um, or a European European sales site. Uh, this is so this is this is conjecture. So take there's a there's a leak, but so take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. But they had um, there was a there was a leak of the price because a Canadian online retailer listed it. For a you know for like a minute before it was pulled down, and um, and so it came in at Canada dollars CA eight hundred thirty nine dollars, uh, eight hundred nine nine eight hundred thirty nine Canada, which amounts to about six hundred thirteen dollars US, and this is for the ninety nine fifty X top so of this, the line. This is the top that, of the line, and that's not a bad price, like at all for that. For so that would uh, be if if. Traditionally, that would mean it would be like a five ninety nine. Yeah, right. Ship. Right. And i I want to say that I want to say that the seventy nine fifty was a was a six ninety nine. I can't yeah, so remember for sure. I could be I could be wrong, but uh, that yep. does seem that does seem less expensive than last gen sixteen core chip. Six ninety nine was the MSRP. Yep. So that would be that would equate yeah. to maybe a hundred. So we might see it for a hundred dollars cheaper. Yeah, that would be and, awesome. And take this take this for its worth. I know Tony's eyes might fall out, but uh, WCCF Tech is where this leak uh, has been Never coming mind. from. You, this is fake news. <laughs> I know. Uh, but the retailer in question, Canada Computers, they ha- that back sounds when fake. I know back when the <laughs> Ryzen 9 7950 came out uh, on sale. They had it listed for nine hundred thirty nine Canada dollars as well as in a MSRP. So and then it did come out at the exact same price. And so coming out with the ninety nine fifty X here for eight thirty nine, that's exactly right. It'll be a hundred. It's showing about a hundred dollar cheaper uh, chip 
So that's cool. That's good news. Yeah, it's a good news. And again, I, I think I'm on your team, team weight for the X3D. I've never had yeah. a top of the line processor. And I think if I have to upgrade my motherboard anyway and do a big, a big pull, um, I mean, how much, what's the, what was the price increase There's on this? There's not a massive price jump. Um, okay. I want to say like 50 bucks per level. Okay. So if, if this one debuts at 599, the X3D version will probably be 649. Okay. Which that's is totally conjecture. Totally all true. But, tr but still, if that's the case, like I'm in like $50. Totally to get, worth the 50 bucks. To get the cash yeah. for gaming in particular where you're going to yep. need that. Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm in. All right, Lando. Uh, you got a story about retro PC gaming on iOS of all things? Yeah, so this is surprising to me. Like, we've talked about this before on iOS and how, like, they've opened up the, the world of emulators, right? And typically when you think about emulators, you're thinking about, you know, old Game Boy games, old Nintendo NES games, SNES games, blah, 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 right? At least for me, like, the idea of, like, old games on Windows XP and, like, retro gaming on PC was not really a thing in my brain. But come to find out that the first retro PC emulator for iPhone and iPad hits the App Store. Um, it is called... I just blanked. UTM. It's a very catchy game. Or name. <laughs> yeah, UTM. And essentially, it's just virtual machine emulator for iOS, for older... It looks um, just like a little screen of Windows XP. That's so cute. Yeah. The only, the only <laughs> catch to this is you have to have your own ISO of Windows XP for licensing reasons. Oh, yeah. I've got so, so many of those. <laughs> yeah, they're not hard to find. They're not hard digital, to get. That's the catch. Digital hoarding and XP was never hard to get licensed. It also activated. it also works so. for older versions of um, Mac OS as well. So if you have older versions of Mac OS to play games on that, you're in luck. This will do wow. that. So I'm going to go play. What's that uh, Lucasfilm? Well, I got I got games. I got games to play. Maybe I'll go play StarCraft 2 or StarCraft StarCraft uh, Brood Wars on there. Mm. Do you actually just buy that, play that on your regular computer? But sure. I Owen likes to do it the like... hard way. I do it. This is uh, the authentic way, playing it on XP, wondering if it's going to crash I, or reboot I on you. I would definitely recommend using a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to try and navigate that. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Does it even have like support for touchscreen? You know? I, you know, who does uh, uh, Maybe. I wonder if they, I wonder if they bake that in. I don't know. Yeah, I would That's hope so. Good... They'd need to. Yeah. yeah. I like the That's name though. Cool. Just UTM. What does that stand for? Just urinary U... track. I don't know if it stands for anything. It's under, just called under the know, moon. Un, uh, up to the moon. It allows you to up. run Windows, Linux, and more on your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. Well, the, Windows says? XP, Windows XP ISOs are very abundant on the internet, pre-activated or not. Uh, well, I think it's fine, uh... if you need one. Didn't they? Oh, UTM is also available for Mac OS, too. It doesn't use just-in-time compiling because Apple doesn't allow that. So performance isn't great compared right. to your typical retro PC emulation on normal right. hardware. It's running fully virtual. But yeah. the fact that it's there, it, that's cool. It's still kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's I would, interesting... would kind of just I would just kind of run that little XP like a little pet up in my corner of my desktop on a Mac OS. It's just like so a little this Windows is a lot XP like, pet. You can get it on your Mac. So I'm sorry, I'm reading through some more stuff. Um, you can install Linux, Windows on your Mac because UTM employs Apple's hypervisor virtualization framework to right. run ARM64 operating systems on Apple Silicon at native speeds. Okay. Hmm. So you could. So it's basically like any type of ISO. You could use it to run yeah, absolutely. Linux versions and anything. That's neat. Very cool. Tell it's neat yeah. by the way that it is. I wonder if you can install Steam on there. If it's a nice one, it's running Linux, I assume. Well, so here the Proton Linux, Linux would be say, yeah. can I run games? No, probably not. UTM does not currently support GPU emulation slash virtualization uh, on Windows, and uh, therefore lacks so support for 3D uh, acceleration. So it's only using the you CPU. You can run older yeah. games with software rendering options, but nothing with hardware acceleration. Hmm. Well, speaking of Steam, Tony's got a story about Valve. Okay, this is really interesting. Uh, Uncle Squinky sent me this the other day. There, there's your credit, Uncle Squinky. He this said, blew sure my mind. By the this, this is such a good story. Um, so Valve, I mean, we all know Valve is fairly secretive about the goings-on of that company. You know, for a long time, we don't even know how many people work there. They're also a human of the industry. Let alone what they're right? working on. 
Um, but they were involved in a uh, lawsuit, an antitrust lawsuit. Mm, I love and, discovery phase. Yep. Mm. So a bunch of stuff came out, and we have some uh, information on the goings on and the workings of the company from the years of 2009 to 2021. Um, have you guys read this article yet? I did. It's I have yeah. not. Jared, Give it a guess. Did. Yeah, I perused through it. So, Lando, yeah. tell how many people do you think work at Steam? How, I mean, how many uh, people Valve? do you think it runs uh, the game so, mecca of the world? I mean, one of the biggest game. Uh, I'm. I mean, more than a handful, right? So, it's probably you know they have HR and things like that. So maybe around a thousand, two thousand. Uh. Try 380 or so. Yeah. That's nothing. That's yeah. nothing. That's no, like 300, 330, 336, like according to people. this. That's counting so, all the administrative stuff and everything. That's, I mean. Can you imagine a company that has this amount of influence on a market space, this market mm-hmm. space being games, video gaming? only having 336 so we're talking 336 people for all the like you guys said administrative stuff blah 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 accounting but hey thumbs up but also um video game development marketing their own support right because they they support hardware hardware development now and video game or uh, uh steam steam itself development when did when did they when is this report is it 2003 to 2021 2009 to 2021 Uh, yeah and it wasn't until 2011 that they that they actually grew they were actually much smaller until 2011 when they went to hardware right because exactly that's when they they started hardware team yeah so only 79 people work on steam 79 so that's the whole team that for that monster for that monster right and and all your like but when you get down and you look at that you go oh i guess they're just managing Files. A database and servers. Well, and no, there's more to it now because you have Steam Chat. Yeah, you have that's true. All the community stuff. Right. You know, like Steam is a. There's a reason it's number one, and that's because it continually updates and puts yeah. out new services. You really know, nice the controller users. mapping software. Oh, in the, yeah, you, yeah, right. You can stream games yep. to different machines. Like, I'm telling yeah. you that com- that controller mapping has saved some games for me because, like, oh, yeah, you get them sure. on Steam and you're like. Well, I want to play this with a controller, but it's only keyboard and mouse. And they're like, "Oh, yeah, here you go." Yeah, you can you. you can make old games from the '90s feel yeah. modern. You have the to same, put the yeah. work into it to configure yeah. it. But once like, you do, it's, it's but great. even then, if you do Steam Deck, the Steam Deck has a great one too. Like it even yeah. you can do that. And, so and a lot of times you don't even have to configure it because there's community profiles yeah. you can just download. Yep, exactly. So they, yeah, it's just they crazy. crow. They crow in their in their handbook in that story. It says they crow in their handbook. So the way that they found this out is that they didn't quite black out enough in the discovery stuff. It it was redacted, but somebody held it up to the light, or they forgot to redact a column, and so it gave employee. Um, the employee headcount and the, I think earnings per employee or something like average or average earning, but in their uh, handbook. Well, yeah. It, well, in their, it basically says we're, we're one of the most profitable companies percentage per wise based on yeah. the number of employees. So, we have. so profit Revenue to per, per employee. Yeah. Profit yeah. to employees, what they know in their, in their handbook, they crow about it specifically because they got a hold of their handbook in this discovery. We are better. We are more profitable per employee than Google and Microsoft and all the and names, all these other big Facebook. heavy. Yeah. yeah. That we I are more they, profitable. They, they haven't per swollen, employee. swollen. They haven't swelled to crazy sizes like every other yeah. tech company. Right. They've, kept it yeah, tight exactly. and focused it was easy and, but, and the business model was easier to scale i guess or maybe they had a genius at the helm but yeah, it'd be my dream to work for valve because I, I, I love, love i love washington so much. so much i'd love to live there and yeah. you know, working for a company that isn't public isn't profit focused even though they're making buttloads of well, money when people come to you right like what advertising yeah. do you have to do if you're steam like people come to you to get games oh, yeah. I mean, you, you, don't need you to compete advertise. with you compete with some other platforms or whatever but like because you are the biggest store of games for most people exactly. you've innovated and you've kept the platform relevant like people come to you you don't have to go and like fight for a lot of your people 
So the, what a, uh, the what estimated a great... the estimated profit per employee is about fifteen million dollars. Fifteen million doesn't mean employee. employees are getting no. that. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's saying if yes. you were to Let's add up clear. the revenue, the net revenue, and divide it by the number of people, that's yeah. you know. So yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they're still they're paid, making. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure employees paid don't well. see that, but yeah, you of know. course, yeah. But they're you know, they're obviously not making fifteen million a year each. There's somebody but, uh, out there right now. There's there's another Tony out there right now. But that instead of throwing away his Bitcoin hard drive, he didn't go and get hired on at Valve when they were hiring. And his buddy was like, "Hey, come work at Valve with me." There's 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 at least another Tony out there that did that. I feel sorry for the Tony of that parallel universe. <laughs> yeah. What a schmuck that Tony I bet that, is. I bet you, I bet that, I bet the Tony, I bet our Tony in that parallel universe, though, found his Bitcoin hard drive. So it's kind too. of an even trade off. So I bet that, shut up, Owen. That's what I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Owen, uh, tell us about these Nintendo translators. Oh, hey. So, you know, video games are constantly getting more and more credit for their artwork, their design, the music um, and scores and stuff like that. They're getting a lot of, a lot of credit for that in the art community, even um, as they become more mainstream and as more, you know, more people are, are coming to that. Well, one of the things that Nintendo is doing is discrediting. Is that what they say in there? They, they, they falsely credit themselves by omission. So on Nintendo games, you know, those are Japanese people and they're making the game in Japanese. And oftentimes if the game's going to go to America, like, um, uh, what's the Island one, the, 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 how the life. What is it? Owen? What is it's it on the switch? What is it? It's uh, what is it? Animal crossing, animal crossing. So animal crossing, right? Like that had to be translated. Well, there's, uh, there are companies that are contracted to do translations and it's called Ninten localization in the biz and they, yeah. yeah. And they ref Nintendo refuses in their policy to credit those translators. However, when the game credits roll, there are translators listed and that's how they technically avoid it because they do have some translation work done in house, but the but a vast majority of it's done by these by these uh, third party companies, and they translate it. Um, but they don't credit them; they credit them. If 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 you were watching the credits and you cared about that a lot, I mean, you have to be. There's there's like probably dozens of them, uh, and you saw no credited translators. You'd be like, wait, who translated this? Uh, and so they put some in there, but they're in house, and. This uh, article talks about how they went and interviewed some of these translations. It's like, yeah, that's just the way it is. Like, we we don't get any credit, and if we talk about it, um, we we can't even say anything. They make us sign a non disclosure for ten years. They can't even say they did it. So they can't years? even go on. Oh they can't gosh. even go on their. Not only does Nintendo not credit them, but then they're forced contractually not to be able to go online and say, "Hey, I know I'm not credited, but you know, like." here's this game I worked on and they're, you know, understandably they're upset because you are what you do. Right. And your personal growth in your career is based on your past experience. And if you're not allowed to talk about it, then why would anybody seek you out, you know? And, um, and they talk about how the translation company that they work for this third party is very much in line with Nintendo. Like if something goes sideways and Nintendo pulls out and decides not to use them, then the translation company just takes what they got. And like some of these, some of these games, if they go big, like breath of the wild was one or tears of the kingdom was one of them, you know, there's a huge amount of money that gets made but it never makes it to the translators because they're not credited. They can't prove they did it. And it just, then Nintendo just gives it to the translation company. And so it really underplays, I mean, translation at its, at its best is, is almost like an art form, right? Like depending on how well you know, the language determines how, what, like 
so I watch yeah, a lot of anime, right? And you and can't I've just had have different... a direct translation. You got to no, have someone that understands the colloquialisms the and the context, right? And add know, that context of yeah, add that gray matter in between, so that because like I've had listening to anime, I've had some translators that I'm like that doesn't that sounds so mechanical, um, yeah. you know, like ChatGPT, um, and when you learn a different language like Japanese or whatever. You'll hear people be like, "Oh, you're talking so f- formal," because most most uh, learning platforms teach you the most formal version of the language. Anyway, so uh, take a minute. Thank your thank your local Nintendo translator uh, if if you find one. I don't know. I mean, they can't say I can't anything. Tell so you, if they are. you know what you it's should do. You know what you just do. Just walk up to everybody and just say, "Hey, if you're a Nintendo translator, thank you." If not, <laughs> yeah, because that's the only way to find them, and and you're gonna save, you're gonna either save somebody's life, or you're gonna make their day. I mean, you never know. So there you go. Well, I don't think it's a problem for Sega because Sega does what Nintendo don't. Whoa, oh, that's a good. Pulled one, out Jared. an old ad oh, right there, oh. huh? Yeah. Is and that an ad they did? Yeah, yeah, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. Yeah, it was oh, in the magazines. Yeah. And speaking of Sega, like, Tony has an article about the Dreamcast, the best console ever released well, in the entirety of the universe. I mean, it was pretty good. So there is you agree. a team. <laughs> there is a team out there um, that has been making Sega FPGA devices for a little while now, and uh, they have That's recently cool. released a video. You should check it out. It's uh, it's it's in the article on the show notes. It's just a quick little video that shows they have a new device that they're working on, a new system to come to come out later this year. It's FPGA, which means you can make it emulate whatever you want it to emulate at a hardware level. Which and is so cool. It is and reprogrammable. Enough to, and it's reprogram. Yeah, reprogrammable. It, and it's powerful enough wow. to emulate Dreamcast and Dreamcast games. So. That's pretty freaking awesome because if you can just grab that and then toss a disc in and not have to worry about hoping that you have an old Dreamcast that still works because they're approaching 20 years old now, 20, yeah. 23, 25 years old. Um, so I, just, I'll tell you, there's not a good emulator out there for those. That's the thing. Right like there, there's some all right ones, but yeah. but not not a ton. Not and at so the hardware level. Solve... They're all using software acceleration. Exactly. Which they're all software solutions right now. Yeah. And so this would be this is going to be great for um, game preservation for Dreamcast yeah. games. I haven't heard of an FPGA emulating something this powerful. Well, there, there's definitely FPGA chips out there that can do this. I believe there's one in the Retro Tink 4K. That FPGA chip is a beast. Um, there's a reason the Retro Tink 4K costs 750 bucks. Yeah. Because I think almost three hundred dollars of that is just the chip that goes in. Wow. There. Yeah, yeah. So Crazy. but the other thing that's, cool, that's a great thing though. Yeah, and the other thing that's cool about this is uh they're saying it will also run basically all of the other Sega systems as well. Since it's FPGA, yeah. they right. just have a I they assume just have a, I, a, a what do they call that when they throw another I, configuration yeah, I, I, like a bootloader anyway. like i'm assuming i mean it'll just have like a like a boot menu yeah. and you'll start it and it will just go through because fpga change programmable up. gate array right exactly. so it just goes it. through and reprograms it real quick and then when you power it off it forgets it or something yep. or or i don't know um it it'll probably like, just keeps it until you change it yeah true yeah like it has so it'll be able setting. to do master system mega drive which yeah. is genesis saturn Sega CD and Dreamcast. One Sweet. potentially with an FPGA, FGPA, F, whatever. FPGA. FPGA. You could program it to emulate any hardware if you got it to program right. I'm yeah, super as as curious about this. Pro- yeah, I'm super curious about this project where they got the source code for the Dreamcast. Like how they how they reversed that and got the got them all. I don't know, but I hmm. just know it's pretty cool. So check out the video. It shows off. Crazy Taxi, uh, Gunbird Two, and Super Street Fighter Two playing. I need Time their, Crisis. That's hardware. what I need. Is that is that a Dreamcast game? Time Crisis. Yeah, they That's, had a they had yeah. a time they had a Time Crisis on Dreamcast. Time Crisis, sure. and what was the other what was the other fighting game? The Soul Caliber. Soul Caliber. 
Yeah, it was yeah, a good you one. Had Soul Calibur. I played that and one. Hours also, on end. Uh, yeah. Highly underrated Power Stone was really I cool. I love mm. Power Stone. Yeah. yeah. Dreamcast yeah. had a lot of really good games. House of the Dead, if you want a light gun game, the House of the Dead games were really cool on that too. Sonic Adventure 1. That game is a turd. Don't bother. <laughs> it was amazing <laughs> it was at the time. Uh uh-uh, uh. It was the not. Dreamcast. The Dreamcast itself was a little bit ahead of its time. So. Oh, definitely. For sure. They had yeah. like internet connection, which first mm-hmm. console to have that. I believe, maybe. No, you you could actually get network play on the Sega Genesis if you had the right uh, attachments. Could you? Oh, man, Sega was so cool. Uh, All right, Uh, that wraps it up with stories. Let's talk about games we've been playing lately. Owen, you, mm. you seem very excited about mm. this. So why don't Halo. you start Halo. He's playing Halo. Massive <laughs> amounts of Halo. Massive amounts of Halo because I just... I've decided if I can't be good... I'll be a lot. Does that make sense? Like, it's kind of like if you don't know knots, tie a lot, you know? And so. Yeah, quantity I, over quality. Yeah, so I've just decided to brute force my way to Onyx. And I've decided to sacrifice my life hours to do so. I'm not any better at the game. Don't, don't, don't be like, wow. If you play with me, you know. <laughs> um, and I've had people literally turn their mic on. In the in, most people don't chat in in Halo Infinite, like in game to like unless you're in a party, like most right. people don't just get on the public. But some guy took the time to, and basically <laughs> on my I own suck. team, on my own team, it just stood by me the whole time and said, "I'm not good." And he was the worst player by far. He had zero kills. He was horrible. I'm not good. But my friend who I'm playing with says, "You're the reason we're losing." And he just stuck to me the whole round. <laughs> <laughs> followed me wherever I went and just like got in my way and said, you suck. Anyway, I'm not good. Nothing's oh, changed there. Cow. Yeah. Uh, but I how, am. How old but was I, this person? Uh, dude, that guy was, that guy was at least in his late twenties, early thirties. Oh, had to be. It wasn't a It wasn't a little prepubescent voice and it hurt. I'm telling you, I muted it. <laughs> and it hurt. <laughs> it hurt. Were, you, were you wearing your hat at the time? Uh, no, Probably. No, because it's hot down here. I never wear my hat when I'm gaming, usually, because it gets so Just awesome. Just podcast. But I'm telling you, you right now, what... A nice, you should buy a nice hanky to keep by your keyboard to wipe your tears when people insult you mm, like this. Sociopaths <laughs> don't cry. We just heard... In, we cry inside. <laughs> there. Um, but what level... Let me ask... I'll start with Lando. La- Lando, what level... Uh, what rank are you in Halo? Uh, okay, I that's know. all. Moving on. I just wanted to embarrass <laughs> you. Uh, what about know. you, Tony? Are you are you gold? I made it up to not almost. I'm rank two general in silver, so I'm right okay. on the cusp of getting into I've gold. I've passed gold. I'm now in platinum. Nice. I need to go through diamond, and then I think one other, and then I'm to onyx. No, I think it's platinum, diamond, onyx. Oh, well, good. Take that, Twyman, with your trolling <laughs> Pokemon. Uh, anyway, that's the game I'm playing, and I'm playing it a lot. Like, I, I I, play it almost out of, almost like a job now, I play it. just, I just <laughs> get in and do a few matches to get the experience, and then I... It's, and it's then doing I, your, you gotta do your day. Yeah, I just get in and, and roast a few people, or let them roast me. Uh, that's typically the case is the latter. So <laughs> nothing changed. Well, good for you. Yeah. I've actually been playing Halo lately as well. Infinite? With friends though. You're Halo a social Infinite, gamer. The campaign. Oh. I, it was on sale, um, for during the summer sale on Steam. And so I bought it, even though I already have it on Game Pass. I bought it so I could play it on my Steam Deck. And I have been playing it on my Steam Deck. I've been enjoying it quite a bit, actually. I, I've been. The campaign's been, all right. All right. You play it socially, like with people. Are you doing multiplayer campaign mode, or are you just going no, through not it solo? Yet. Right on. Um, I have a brother-in-law who I'll probably play with eventually because he. I don't think he's played it before. Um, and I've played it with my real brother a little bit too. Oh, Tony's gone. Um, anyway, yeah. So I, I've been I've been enjoying that. Uh, two other games I've been playing uh, is oh, what's that game? Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, how is that? Come on, be honest. I like. I want to. I want to play it. It's very high quality. I'm playing it on PC since it came out a couple months ago. That's what I was waiting for because it was originally a PS5 
release. PS4 right? release PS4 originally. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But the port is a very good port. It runs very well. Um, can't ask for anything more other than ray tracing, but you know, it didn't originally have it, so that's okay. Good story. Good gameplay. I've liked it so far. And uh, the last game that has consumed my time, and I think I've talked about this before, Mini Shoot Adventures. Uh, got this also on the Steam Summer Sale. I've already beaten it. I loved it so much, I started playing it again. This was recommended to me by my brother. Fantastic Wait, what's game. It, what's it called? Mini Shoot Adventures. Mini it is shoot a top-down Zelda-like. Yeah. But great. it is a twin-stick shooter slash bullet Ooh. hell mixed with Zelda. Oh, that looks and fantastic. It's available on the Mac, too. It's, uh, it's an indie oh. game. Pretty cheap. Um, great fun. Highly recommend it. Um, a lot of lot of dodging then, moving around, dodging yeah, obstacles yeah. from the top down. That's so cool. It's not horribly difficult either, so I had a good time just just going through it. And I'm I'm going back playing it on hard now, and even then I'm I'm able to survive. So the difficulty level I think is perfect if you're not looking for a crazy challenge. Um, like yeah, yeah. So it's not not summer sales over, right? But uh, it's still cheap. But yeah, it's 15 bucks. 15, it's 15 bucks. That's worth it for that. Yep. It's a it's perfect worth. Steam Deck um, handheld game. So. so That's what I love about indie games in that way. It's like I'd, I'd drop 15 bucks on that. Yeah. And a game like this would have been like 60 or 70 back in the day in the 90s, you know? And it's just as high quality as any game put out back then. It's just way cheap. So very cool. Lando, how about you? I'm still playing Bellatro and Shapes. I'm, I'm, I'm a wow, Superman. Wow, still. Bellatro is so much fun, guys. I don't think you understand how much I love this game. Like, you just got to play it. Is it Tetris? What is it? It's Bellatro. the poker deck building it's, game. It's the oh. poker, well, yeah, poker hand roguelite game. It's so good. Go, go, Owen. I think you'd like this game. Is it on, but is it on only on Apple devices? No, no it's, it's on just, everything. It's, it's on everything. Oh, okay. Is it on um, iOS now? No, it's on iOS yet. But yeah, that'll be the I'm day. Gonna, I think I'll get it when I can play it on my iPad. Yeah. That I have a buddy, be a, my, good a, iPad a guy game. I work with has it on his Steam Deck, and he prefers playing it on his Steam Deck on his to his computer. Yeah. Well, that does look fun, actually. Okay. Okay. So what about it keeps you coming back? It's because it's a roguelite, right? I just You start a run, you see where you go. Um, there's a whole bunch of, like, jokers that are modifiers for your runs, right? So, you know, like, there's... And they're all thematically really good. Um, but they, they affect score and they there's really fun interactions and synergies that can happen in unexpected ways. So there's like a hundred like no less than hundred jokers. There's a there's a high amount of jokers and it's fun finding fun combos to improve your run and, and improve your score. So every run's different, literally. It's not just doing the same thing. It's roguelite. It's fun. It's good. I don't cool. know. Tony, over to it you. Scratches my itch. Uh just the normal stuff I've been playing lately: Halo, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, and mm. uh, Doom Eternal. Still on Elden Ring. Wow. Do you guys? I haven't, had a, lot, I actually haven't came out? had a lot of time to play the last two weeks. I haven't. I haven't really played much of anything besides is, some multiplayer with friends. Is Erd Tree out? Yeah, Erd yeah. Tree's out. Okay. And you already played through that, Jaren? Are you waiting? I am too, either waiting or or not doing it. I don't, I haven't right. Decided You're to. like I. Can, I don't. You don't know if you can invest. You don't want to yeah, go back. You don't want to go back. You broke the heroin habit. Like and... Joe Joe Reedy, <laughs> it's okay. Um, I I still love it, but I became a different person when I was playing Elden Ring. Mm. I abandoned my family for a time. Uh, things got ugly with with work. I would I would play in the middle of work, even though I had things to do. I was I was like a, a you were in an it. alcoholic. You were an when addict. I was playing this game. You were yes. in it. Yeah. So it was it was ugly. I, I I don't know if that side of me can come out again. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't you you got to get just set up screen time on your Mac? Do they still do that? Screen time limits on Mac OS? No one games on Mac. Come on. I'm oh. I game on Mac all the time. Oh, just like I said, no one games on no. Mac. <laughs> Thanks. Well, now you can on XP with that emulator. Boom. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Okay, well, I think that's it then. 
thanks, thanks for listening. I, th- I think this is probably the most successful Geek Show Arcade we've we've ever had. I uh, I really we, attribute to I, that I to the car Tony. So. Yeah, yeah. We we did we did our, all the arcades, all the best arcades. We did it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> uh, a lot of people you, saying it. If if you too liked this episode, why don't you uh, give us a tip on Patreon? Uh, Patreon's a way for you guys to donate to our show. Um, helps keep the lights on. And you too get some benefits from this. Uh, you have a super super secret Discord channel that you can subscribe to. You also get the in between, a full you get a separate podcast feed without any ads, and it's all one show like it used to be. So there you go. Um, and we also give a shout out to those who donate donate six dollars or more. So thank you to David Roshinsky, Aaron Faulkner, Connor Keesaw, and Wolf of All Tony. You guys are awesome. Jason Eatman, Mies Chonies, Rock Dog and Owen, Archie mm-hmm. the Archivist, Be the Eight Year Old, Michael Shane, Tony the Home Theater Geek, Travis Johnson, Buy Geek Show Arcade Help Desk Stickers, at Pie Man Graphics on Etsy. All proceeds go to Lee George Cades Medical Bills, Jeremy, No Name No Color, Keslo, Eric Steinman, Eric Cruz, The In Between Rating Plus 35, Matt Nelson, Harry Patch, Adam, Stuart Lloyd. The problem with society is there are no mole hills that can't be mountain climbed over. Uh, Ryan M. and Adam Hex. Thank you. You got it last you. time. You, it was a one time. I got thing. it. I got it. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. It's past. It's past the pumpkin hour. Jaren's fading. All right. That, that's it for today. Uh, Owen, take us out. Hey. We hope you care.